Hello, thank you for joining us today to learn about TNTP and the deep dive partnerships that are available to you as part of your participation in STEM LD. Before we dive into our deep dive partnerships, I wanted to take a minute to introduce myself and our TNTP team. My name is Jessica Prophet, and I am a director at TNTP. Today, you'll also hear from Sherry and I about deep dive partnerships, and you can see our specific areas of expertise on the slide. We have two other teammates, Elizabeth and Stephen, that support with the grant as well, and you may run into them from time to time. Here is our agenda for today. First, we'll discuss who we are at TNTP, then we'll dive into middle school science and middle school math deep dive partnerships, and finally, we'll give you some information about what to do and who to contact if you're interested in learning more. You may have encountered TNTP in the past through some of the other work we do in the state of Tennessee, or you may be familiar with our most recent national report, The Opportunity Myth. TNTP is a national nonprofit that was founded by teachers who works alongside the educators we serve in schools, districts, and state offices. TNTP's mission is to end the injustice of educational inequity by providing excellent teachers to the students who need them most and by advancing policies and practices that ensure effective teaching happens in every classroom. This map shows some of the partnerships that TNTP has with districts across the state of Tennessee. This map is from July 2021, and it doesn't actually include our deep dive partnerships that we have through STEMLD this year, which you'll see on the next slide. TNTP has been partnering with schools and districts for more than 15 years and all across the state. TNTP has also done extensive work with the Tennessee Department of Education on state level initiatives, including one that focused on the creation of the Tennessee Vision for Excellent CTE Instruction in 2018. Currently, we also work with 30 districts across the state to support the adoption and implementation of high quality instructional materials. We're very familiar with the unique challenges that you face as educators in your communities. Here you can see the districts that we had the opportunity to partner with for the deep dive partnership in this past year, right here in East Tennessee. Before getting into the operational details of what participating in our deep dive partnerships look like, we wanted to recenter us on why we are here and participating in this initiative. The table you see here displays some data regarding the employment in STEM occupations and projected employment in 2030. You can see that the share of STEM jobs is smaller when compared to all non-STEM jobs, but they are growing at a far greater rate than total jobs and non-STEM jobs. And if you look at the final column of this table, you'll see that in STEM occupations, the median salary is more than double of non-STEM occupations. This is national data from the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, and it includes all levels of occupation, which include the entry-level roles for recent graduates of high school. This data here illustrates part of the challenge that we face. We know that STEM occupations offer higher earning opportunities, and the bars on the left show that over time, the percent of students who express an interest in STEM is high and has remained constant over several years. Nationally, nearly 50% of students taking the ACT indicated that they had an interest in pursuing a STEM-related career after high school. You can see that the number stays remarkably constant. However, the charts on the right also show us that the number of students who are hitting the ACT STEM readiness benchmark is also constant and remains at only about 20%. That was national data. Let's look at some Tennessee specific data from that same report. Again, 49% of students taking the ACT in Tennessee expressed an interest in STEM. However, on the ACT, only 18% of them scored high enough to reach the benchmark for STEM readiness. The STEM readiness benchmark is an average of the student's math and science ACT scores. Their research shows that students who reach the STEM readiness benchmark have at least a 50% chance of earning a B or higher in a STEM related course after high school. So we see that STEM occupations offer students higher earning potential and students are interested in pursuing those careers. However, there's a gap in who is interested in them and who is adequately prepared to access them. TNTP's deep dive partnerships are one way that you can work to address that gap in STEM readiness at your school. Each partnership, either middle school science or middle school math, is a little different, but they both focus on the same core ideas. First, teachers engage in learning opportunities to build a shared vision of excellent instruction in math and science. Teachers will have access to tools and resources that reflect the best practices that align with the shared vision and teachers will engage in ongoing professional learning to support them with implementation of best practices as they work toward the vision. 
we also offer the opportunity for leaders and coaches to engage in the work alongside of teachers and do instructional learning walks with leaders at least once per year. As I said earlier, schools can choose to participate in one or more of these subject-specific deep dive partnerships. We know that some districts are already working with TNTP, so this might serve as a nice complement to the other work you're doing. Now, let's talk about what this will look like specifically in each deep dive partnership. I'll get us started by talking about science. The middle school science deep dive develops teachers understandings of integrated 3D science and empowers them to bring it to life in their classrooms. The TNTP science deep dive partnership is an opportunity specifically for middle school science teachers. Through this partnership, teachers will receive training and support that prepares them to take their instruction to the next level by implementing high leverage science instructional strategies. In years one and two of STEMLD, we've heard from teachers that they are familiar with the three dimensions of science instruction, the disciplinary core ideas, science and engineering practices, and cross-cutting concepts. We've heard that some have seen these ideas in the framework for K-12 science education and the Tennessee science standards. We've also heard that these practices have been challenging for teachers to implement for a variety of reasons, most of which connect to the lack of high quality instructional materials or the amount of time it takes to create and prepare for this type of instruction. The goal of the TNTP Middle School Science Deep Dive Partnership is to provide teachers with access to training and materials that will help them put their students at the center of their lessons using three-dimensional science instruction by empowering them with high quality core resources. The focus of this partnership is on learning and implementing Open Syed, which is an open source middle school science core curriculum. It is a complete curriculum for grades six through eight. It's one of the only science curriculum that have been reviewed by the Next Generation Science Consortium and have earned the high quality NGSS design badge. Because Tennessee is not a next gen state, it doesn't align perfectly with the Tennessee standards, but there are multiple units at each grade level that align with the Tennessee state standards and can be used with very minimal revisions. Additionally, we have seen teachers in our deep dives be able to better adjust their plans and materials to reflect high leverage evidence-based practices when they have had access to this training and ongoing development. I've been talking for a while now, so I'm going to take a breath and show you this brief video about Open Syed so you can get an idea of what this program is like and hear how teachers and students have experienced it in other districts. What is our question right now that we are trying to answer? Open Syed is just a whole different way of thinking. Does the speed affect damage? So the faster it goes, does it make more damage? And this really allows kids to be the, the knowers. You need nine sections because you're going to do nine tests today. Accuracy, accurate answers, human error. We're always looking for that. They're able to kind of lead these investigations. The beginning of our unit starts out with an anchoring phenomenon. And the anchoring phenomenon really drives us through the entire unit. This one happens to be cell phones breaking and that's really relevant to these kids and so they pose some questions um, we do some observations and we really investigate the questions that they have you're expected to talk a lot more in this class than any other class that i had thumbs up thumbs down like we're good okay you may go ahead and do your tests for your slow rolls and then add your crackers and start recording some data <laughs> So on our driving question board, as we learn things, we check them off. Um, can we prove it with evidence? It's more fun. It's not just talking about what you did in a book or something like that. It, you get to experience it hands-on. Kids that may have discipline issues in other rooms don't have them in here typically. Oh my goodness! We got graham crackers flying everywhere. They tell me their brains hurt at the end of this class because they're like, you don't let us just sit here. You make us think. Here we go, lesson two. So we finished our anchoring phenomenon routine. Training for Open Syed is really exciting. Um, it's teachers who are innovative and forward thinkers coming together. Not just be given a curriculum and say, here, implement this. They actually get like in-depth training on it. They get to go through it. And then at the end of it, they get to give feedback on how to make it better. The materials we build reflect the teacher's voice. We have teachers on every design team for these units and the Every unit goes through not only the development and then the field testing, but then we take back all of the information that we've gotten from the field tests and try and revise it. One of the things we're really excited about with Open Syed is that it's a free and open curriculum resource. So it really provides districts all across the state an option that suits their budgets nicely. I think science has become boring through textbooks and Open Syed brings it to life again. 
And so I hope that kids come in here excited to see what we're doing. You know, breakage. We're ready to plan something new. And, and right now we're breaking stuff. <laughs> We have partnered with over 10 schools in the region across seven counties so far. Over 20 science teachers have been participating in these science deep dives to develop and deepen their understanding of the open SIAD materials and implementation. They work on this, the work on this slide was captured on a school visit in day two of an open SIAD unit in sixth grade. In this unit, students are learning about heat transfer and they are doing that through an extended investigation of different types of cups, trying to answer the question, what keeps a drink warm or cold? You can see that even in day two of this unit, students are already engaging in modeling, engineering, and experimentation. All students in the class were highly engaged in doing the science of the lesson and doing that brain sweat, hard work that you heard the teacher describe in the video. The students that were interviewed all said that this was unlike how they had learned science before, and they were really excited to learn in this way. Schools that participate in the deep dive with TNTP will receive the initial training on a unit during the summer, access to the curriculum and the materials they need to do that unit, and they'll also receive follow-up support during the year. For new schools and teachers, this kicks off with a four-day training in June where teachers will learn about the open SIAD approach and will practice with one unit at their grade level. And for schools that are already in the partnership but want to continue into year two, we'll offer a two-day training on a second unit of open SIAD so that they have training and materials for two complete units. All schools receive implementation support that includes classroom observations, feedback and coaching, and support with internalization and lesson planning. In the final year of support, year three, school and or district staff are invited to join a cohort of instructional leaders that will focus on building skills and developing teachers and sustaining the growth and in instruction beyond the deep dive support. This instructional leader cohort will meet virtually four times per year. Teacher leaders, instructional coaches, and assistant principals are invited to join this cohort. As I wrap up my portion here, I'm showing a few pictures from our kickoff training this year. We heard overwhelmingly positive feedback about Open Syed from teachers, and we look forward to helping you bring it into your own classrooms next year. And with that, I'm going to pass it to my colleague Sherry, who's going to talk a little more about the Middle School Math Deep Dive Partnership. My name is Sherry, and I'm a senior manager with TNTP. I live in Birmingham, Alabama, and I'm excited to share a little bit of information about our Middle School Math Deep Dive Partnership through the STEM LD Nice Wonger Grant. TNTP's 2018 publication, The Opportunity Myth, identified high expectations and strong instruction as two areas that make a big difference for kids. This deep dive partnership is all about utilizing adopted high quality math materials to support strong instruction and high expectations in classrooms by supporting your instructional leadership team and your teachers. Math classrooms look a lot different from when I was a student. They may look different than when you and your teachers were in school. I remember my teacher standing at the front of the room telling us step by step how to get the answer to a math problem. I copied down my thinking of the teacher and then I practiced those steps on my own with the odd problems numbered in the back of the book. I didn't really learn anything about numbers and how they play together and I wasn't ever really given an opportunity to think and reason for myself. Typically, there was only one way to solve a problem, the teacher's way. Today, the expectation is the students are doing most of the thinking in math classrooms. They're allowed to notice and wonder, make connections, discover patterns, and write generalizations to help them make sense of the math they are learning. The teacher is there to facilitate and ask questions, and really listening to how students are thinking about the problems. They encourage students to explore multiple solution paths and help them take what they've discovered and apply it to new situations. This type of learning is engaging, relevant, and impactful. Students in these classrooms typically enjoy mathematics and are more likely to persevere through tough problems. Now many of our teachers have had a similar math experience to mine, and many teachers are more comfortable teaching the way that they were taught. Letting students do the thinking of math class is hard and different and can be a little intimidating where we come in. Dive engages principals, assistant principals, instructional leaders and coaches and teachers in the important work of ensuring strong instruction and a high expectation for all kids. We will work together to put cycles in place to support strong math instruction on your campus. To do this, there will be opportunities for professional learning for both teachers 
and instructional leaders, shared classroom walks with a member of the TNTP team, and support in developing school strategy for math instruction. We can tackle questions like, what does strong instruction look like? How can I support my teachers in improving their instruction? What are high leverage math strategies? What should we be thinking about regarding our curriculum? How do I ensure strong pathways to success in Algebra 1 and beyond? Participate in the deep dive will receive initial training during the summer on vision for math instruction as well as the five practices for math discourse. This will happen in June in person, somewhere within the region. And for schools that are already in the partnership but want to continue into year two, we will offer a half day training that will support year one work, focusing on teacher instructional practices to help develop a classroom culture where students own the thinking in math class. All teachers will also receive support during monthly PLCs where we will focus on how we can utilize the Tennessee IPG to strengthen our instruction and get the outcome we want for students. In the year of support, school and or district staff are invited to join a cohort of instructional leaders that will focus on building skills and developing teachers and sustaining the growth in instruction beyond the deep dive support. This instructional leader cohort will meet virtually four times per year. Teacher leaders, instructional coaches, and assistant principals are all invited to join the cohort. These are just a few examples of our work together in Math PD over the last year. Our goal really is to create classrooms where all kids become confident mathematical thinkers and problem solvers. We are so excited to start this journey with you and your district and schools. So in closing, TNTP is offering two deep dive supports that are focused on strong instruction and high quality materials. Each deep dive support is structured a little differently, but the goal is the same. We will support you in creating meaningful and rigorous STEM classroom experiences for your students at your school. Thanks so much for watching and learning. If you have any additional questions, please reach out to Jessica Profit with Science or Sherry Gates for Math. Thanks and have a wonderful day. Cool Math Deep Dive Partnership. And we're looking forward to the good partnerships that'll come out of this. Uh, I'm gonna kick it over to uh, Perry Wilson and Don Swain. Uh, they are coming to us from If I Had a Hammer, and they are the experts in all things um, uh, measurement and math and fractions. Uh, they'll explain it a lot better than I can, um, so I will, uh, I'll let them uh, take it from here. I do think that you guys have co-host ability, so you should be all set to share your screen. Is that it? That's it. Okay, thank you all for uh, joining us today. Um, I think really after following Krista, the middle school math to me, I think she kind of wrapped it up really good talking about the, the importance of that. And uh, so Dawn is, Dawn's the brains of the operation. She keeps everything organized. She's got a background in uh, television production and she helps us with all of the the professional development. So she's gonna she's gonna help me run through this real quick. Yeah. So let's see. You just slide, slide it down here. Okay. Um so this is a uh whoa. I'll, I'll, I'll you're gonna I'll help run me. The, okay. There you go. You're gonna help me. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this is an applied mathematics program and uh I call it K through J instead of K through 12. We started working with prisons. I'm actually going down to Lexington Tennessee tomorrow to work with some inmates that we help with uh, the mathematics to pass the certifications going into apprenticeship programs or onto the jobs. But um, really we're trying to focus what has been this, uh, the elementary school mathematics of what uh, I think is the foundation of it. We've worked with a lot of high schools because when you, we work with a lot of construction companies, uh, advanced manufacturing, and students' ability to understand measurement is pretty frightening right now. And with uh, learning loss and the rest of it, that's kind of what we're trying to focus is help with that. Um, so just a little bit about me. I couldn't read till I was an adult. Uh, I've got dyslexia and learn math on the job as a carpenter. Uh, first two people that taught me math, like I could understand it. 
the, their names were Sonny and Red. They were my bosses. And it was just like, just teaching me just really what the math looked like and applied. And I was a carpenter, didn't even realize I was doing mathematics. I thought mathematics was in a book. And I, I, could, was, I couldn't do it out of a book. And when I got to apply it and work with a carpenter, I could get it. So we worked with over a million students. We worked with over 30 science museums around the country, 60 colleges and you know, a million children. So um, really just wanted to, to talk a little bit about how am I ever gonna use this mathematics? So what we're doing is we teach fractions, measurement, scaling, we go into architectural design, uh, we build houses big enough that 30 students can get in a house that we're going to be doing with Walter State. Um, to immerse a student into mathematics, to me, is what it's about, because there's really only five things you can do in math the way I teach it. You add, subtract, multiply, divide, and then there's just the language of math, and we just make that physical. Perimeter, you add. Area, you multiply. But when you're physically working with it, understand how it works, then the math starts becoming real to the students. But the, the real foundation piece, if you don't understand fractions, you're not going to understand measurement. You're not going to understand scaling. And that is a huge piece. And you can get answers correct in school, but then when you need to be able to apply them to the real world, you're not getting it. So I wanted to show you a little video first of this is the way we teach fractions, because when you're actually working on the job, there's not an algorithm on a job. You've got to know the math. So this is just a quick little video to kind of show what we expect from our students. Watch how these fifth grade Lansdowne Elementary students add three fractions with uncommon denominators in their heads with their eyes closed. So what is three-fourths plus one-eighth plus Two sixteenths. What is one half plus one eighth plus one sixteenth? Eleven sixteenths. Eleven sixteenths. How'd you come up with that? I know that one half is equal to four eighths. So I put four eighths there, took away the half. Okay. I split this eighth over, and I got five eighths. Right. And I know that there are ten sixteenths in five eighths. And I slid this one over and got eleven sixteenths. Watch how these fifth grade Lansdowne Elementary students add three. So I, I'm trying to get law over on this with me, but I think the name STEM being dyslexic, it's wrong. Science, technology, engineering, and math, we need to flip this dude around and call it METS because if we don't do the math, we're not doing that other stuff. I think we've got to be able to start with math and be able to show with these partnerships that Nicewanger's putting together, we want to be the math part that's really helping you understand the engineering and the rest of it that that we're building upon. And so um, when you're breaking it down from the fractions, measurement and scaling, and you're looking at it as a whole, first of all, the students, why do we need it? We need to show them how they're gonna actually use it and apply it immediately. And, um, but when you go back, um, kind of the, the back office part of mathematics, Vanderbilt was involved in a $10 million research project and when you just look at how foundational the fractions are to understanding mathematics, how it's based in the workforce, it, it's critical. And I, and I think uh, we've got a Hammer Institute at the University of West Alabama now. Part of what we're doing is trying to do some real research on students' ability to actually measure. And when you look at the, uh, for example, in Nashville, with all of the, we're here in Franklin, just south of Nashville, uh, a plumbers Association has quit working with the high schools because the students are coming out and they can't read a ruler and they're putting all this all this time and energy and effort trying to help and these fundamentals aren't there and they would just assume wait and try to help them when they get out of school when they're on the job 
my thought is if we can help them when they're in school and help that, that we're going to be focused more on what these careers are all about. Um, that group you saw doing the fractions with their eyes closed, um, we're, they've been involved in a $200,000 research project with the University of Kentucky. And Lansdowne Elementary, uh, they are, what is it? How much, what's the free, the free reduced lunch was, yeah, 82%. 82 and there were 36 different languages spoken. So I was like, that's what, the kind of school I was looking for. So they had a 99% uh, gains, average gains on the math test in mathematics. And so um, part of what we're trying to do is when I'm teaching, I like all the kids up and moving and talking on like a loud classroom. I wanna see everybody up and moving and collaborating. But we go through the fractions measurement and then we worked with the Memphis Grizzlies in Memphis who are working with 108 schools there. Now these were fifth graders. We did a citywide architectural design competition for fifth graders. And these houses are one fourth inch equals uh, one foot in scale. But as they start going through it, their imagination, we have trampoline rooms, helipads, we've got all kinds of stuff. I don't care what you're doing, but you've got to be able to understand what the area, the perimeter, of, it's like an art class to me. You start through the design, you understand it mathematically, you're creating, your, it's not my dream house, it's your dream house, but I love this one. With an indoor swimming pool, instead of a diving board, they got a bridge over the pool. So it's just, it's really what the students are seeing. And this was the citywide winner's house. And the master bedroom in this huge house is only 13 by 13. But we've got a basketball court, a sauna, there's a mini golf, a bowling alley, a swimming pool. Back over here, you got a McDonald's, a Burger King, and a CC's pizza in the house. So I don't know, I don't care what you put in it, but I need to know what's the area, what's the perimeter, what's the volume, what's the what's mathematically what's going on with what you're creating. And then, you know, we've just worked with a lot of corporate sponsors. The Grizzlies were awesome. We got to give trophies away. They got to meet the players and get down on the, the floor. And it was something that we got a lot of kids interested, inspired with. But you want to talk a little bit about how we're actually doing this, Dawn? Yes. Yeah, so our online curriculum is, uh, we'll walk you step by step through uh, everything. Uh, we've created um, apps, we've created videos, and uh, you'll see on the next slide, but the videos were actually uh, directed by an Emmy Award winning director of Sesame Street. And um, we felt it was very important to always keep the fidelity high and in its simplest message. So. Yeah, and, and a lot of what we're doing with the students physically learning the fractions is they need to be able to create their own problems, solve their problems. And I don't like it. It's just, this is just me. I can't make the whole, I can't make anybody do anything. But the way I like to teach it is if you're, we like to start with comparing fractions and equivalent fractions. And until you can teach me that and explain it to me and create your own problem, I really don't want you to move forward. Because what's bigger, 11 sixteenths or three fourths? You can do what are they? It's what do they call it? Oh man, uh, butterfly deal, whatever it is. Where, where you're you're oh, yeah. you're crossing these fractions, fractions up, and you body. get the answer right. You have no idea how or why that works, but when it's physical, the students can now articulate what they see and what it is. Um, but yeah, this was this was when I met Dawn. Um, I had created a series of videos. I was working on these videos. And then she introduced me to her friend, Steve Feldman, who directed Sesame Street. And Stevie just told me, he was like, man, these are awful what I've created. You know, it, didn't, it didn't have the rhythm to it and the rest of it. So we've got a whole series of animated videos that what it does is there, it's self-paced, it's self-directed. It does the articulation of the math. It shows you physically and visually what's going on. And then the students are actually going through physical activities right. as we move through. And it doesn't matter whether you're in third grade or whether you're in 12th grade, right. it still applies. It still applies to the same piece. And then uh, you wanna talk about the builds? Yes, so we do um, a two hour field trip experience. Uh, Walter State Community College is uh, our partner hub uh, for the Nice Wonger uh, STEM LD grant. And, uh, Anita Ricker is the one heading it up. She's head of workforce development. They are doing a kickoff build 
on March the 9th, they already have a school already signed up to participate. However, uh, Anita did say, if you wanna send one or two representatives from your school, you can contact her and I have her contact information on this next slide right here. Um, but if you're interested in viewing the build, uh, you can call her in RSVP and she'll be glad to accommodate you. And then, and then for me, kind of the last part is, well, we'll work with the University of Alabama Birmingham and they just had done an evaluation on 400 sixth graders. And their evaluation was they're working at the third grade level math right now. And so um, I think across the country, what we're seeing, and it's easier to assess what's going on with the little ones versus like um, in your area with Eastman Chemical. I mean, they are really feeling it as, the, as they're graduating, moving out, trying to be employed right now, what deficits there are in the mathematics. So I think what happens, what we're trying to do, and, I, and I, to me, this is what the whole STEM LD piece is about, Leveling education, when you're leveling something physically, if one end is down, you know, you're, we're, we're continuing to level and we're moving down right now as, our, as everything's moving down with, as far as uh, our proficiency. But if we, when you're plumbing as a carpenter, you're going from the top and you're coming down and you're seeing where our goals and our objectives are. So for me, I don't care if it's third graders or their inmates. There's a certain baseline of mathematics you have to know to be able to apply and understand what, what that is. So what we're doing now is actually on the process of trying to become on the eligible training provider list as a pre-apprenticeship program for the state of Tennessee and Alabama and moving into Georgia with the work we're doing in Atlanta. But ultimately, I think what you're going to get with any of the partners uh, working with NICEWANGER is we're all trying to like to me, plumb this education piece. We're all trying to set high goals and objectives, let the students kind of see what the end game is and how it's gonna to apply to their life. So we're really proud to be a part of this. Our professional development is we're here for you. So if you need more help, whatever it is, we're gonna make sure that uh, you've got that. Our, our videos are very, very, uh, powerful and, and help with the professional development and the training, but we provide PD. Anytime a teacher needs some help, we'll help. If you've got some kids that are really struggling, I would love to help them. So that's part of what I, I, I got in this working with kids. So I'm trying to learn how to run a business with it too. But <laughs> at the same time, that's what our real goal here is. If you've got students that need some help, you have some teachers that need some help, we're here to support you. Well, thanks, Hammer Team. Uh, I appreciate appreciate y'all being here and uh, and some of the kind words. Um, so uh, a couple of things that I would maybe tack on there. Um, you know, Perry touched on uh, the the Hammer Team's willingness to be flexible, and uh, and so if you're thinking about a partnership with them, it does not mean that every single math teacher you have has to partner with Hammer. They could. Uh, you could partner with Hammer outside of the math disciplines. Um, but uh, but there's certainly the opportunity to pick and choose, uh, you know, who who uh, partners in terms of which grade levels. I think you can probably see the applicability across the the several grade levels we serve as part of STEM LD. So uh, whether that's sixth graders all the way up through seniors, um, there's there's certainly some applicability there. And I did want to mention uh, since they talked about the uh, the Walter State date on March the 9th. Um, that that is an opportunity for for one uh, middle school to to participate. But if you choose to partner with Hammer, uh, your schools, your students will also have that the opportunity to to do those Hammer builds. Uh, we, we've built in funding as part of STEM LD to support that. So we'll have some hub sites around the region, and we'll continue to add those to the life of the grant. Uh, we've got a couple of them now that'll be hosted at Walter State campuses. We'll be trying to spread them out geographically so that um, they are accessible and a little bit closer for field trip purposes. Um, but that is an opportunity to really think creatively, to not only interact with, uh, with Hammer and the things that they're bringing to the table, but also to get your students, even in middle school, on college campuses uh, throughout the area. So there's, there's some real strong synergy there between uh, Walter State and Hammer in this, for this particular uh, partnership. And uh, we're, we're really excited about the things that have grown um, just sort of organically out of, out of that. So um, hey, can I say one more thing, Law? 
Go ahead. Yeah, well, one thing with the house builds, just for clarification, we're going to build a house in about two to two and a half hours, mm -hmm. big enough the whole class can get in. It's disassembled and rebuilt with the next class. And we're teaching these principles behind that. But they've got nail bags and hammers and goggles. They don't have a teacher. They have a boss. If they don't listen, they're going to get fired. So it's like a real world situation we do with the students, but it's set up on a field trip. So if you want to bring groups into Walter State, mm -hmm. that they're there to set up and build and go through the program with them individually. So any questions for uh, for uh, Dawn and, and Perry? Um, if you have them, you can drop them into the uh, the chat if you're shy or if you want to come <laughs> off of uh, come off of mute, you're more than welcome to do so. We do have a few minutes here for questions. I'll open the floor up also if somebody had something that um, TNTP folks, if somebody had something on your end uh, that they submitted via chat that you want to, you think would be worth sharing more broadly, we could do that too. But uh, while, uh, while I'm waiting on any questions to come in, Brashe, if you, if you wouldn't mind to go ahead and drop the, uh, the um, survey link in the chat, I'm also going to go ahead and share my screen and um, Looks like we had a question come into the chat there. I'm going to finish this thought though. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen just so that anybody that has to uh, do the recording gets a, gets a look at the uh, the survey link as well. So let me do that. Uh, so in the chat, uh, the survey the survey link is in there, and then someone said, "So the build on the ninth is it just for teachers to come and watch?" Mm -hmm. Perry and Don, yeah, you want to answer? It's really for the teachers to be able to see what it is, so you can understand what your students would actually be participating in. And of course, the opportunity would then be there for you to come and bring your students uh, to, to do that at a later date. Um, and, then, if and then a little shameless plug for Walter State. Part of the thing about bringing the students onto campus is we want them to tour the campus and see right. what's available on campus. So we bring them, we bring the students on, they're going to go through Hammer, they're going to eat lunch, but then they're going to be able to experience what's actually going on on college campus. Uh, hey, Perry, if you don't mind me asking, this is Philip Kutcher. You said a school, uh, a particular school was coming on that yeah. date. Uh, do you know which school it is? I absolutely do not. Okay. I was hoping. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're, it, I'm from South Green High School, and I know we're partnering partner with you guys, and we're using yeah. some of your stuff in class, and I didn't know if it was us or not. I, I'm not Philip, sure. I can, I can tell you it is, uh, it's Greenville Middle School in this case. Um, but, you know, that that is sort of the um, – uh, the, the breaking open of that particular hammer kit, hammer set uh, for the for the build. So uh, it'll be broken in. And if South Green wants to come this spring or, or think about something in the fall, it, it's available now to do that. So uh, we can set you up with that if you guys want to come that way. Yeah. Okay. Philip, sounds good. Thank you. And Philip, also, um, you know, like if you wanted to attend, we can talk about how you could get your students working with some younger students. There's some different ways that, that we can put that together to teach it to high school students or to have a high school teach it to younger students. I'm, okay, thanks. Th there's a, uh, it's not really, it's not a question, but a, uh, but a statement uh, from, from Josh Castle uh, saying that um, he, there was a handful of teachers at his school that um, uh, Mr. Wilson did a session with, and uh, if anybody would have has any interest, uh, reach out to them. And I would just echo that if you if you don't um, if you want to get in contact with Perry and Don, let us know. We'll we'll just link you up right away if you want to learn more. Uh, and for any of our partners, they're more than happy to spend more time talking talking to you about what they're bringing to the table. We only had 30 minute windows because we're trying to be respectful of y'all's time uh, because we know teachers are busy. Um, but uh, they're they're more than happy to share out further with you if you're interested in a partnership with them. Um, so, uh, uh, let me go ahead and stop sharing my screen now. It's long enough for the, for the recording purposes. Uh, if you all have any further questions, I would say type quickly now or come off of mute, uh, or, or hold your piece for today's session. Uh, just, a, just a reminder that we do have a, another showcase tomorrow. Um, that will be with civil air patrol and with Northeast state community college. Um, they're both bringing some very cool and interesting, uh, unique things to the table. So, uh, so do attend that. It'll be at the same bad time and the same bad channel. Um, <laughs> no, that's, that's an old joke there, but, uh, but seriously, it will be at 3 30 PM tomorrow run, running the same time length as today's and the zoom link is actually the same. So we've just recycled that same zoom link for all of our showcases. So you can just click that same zoom link and, uh, and they, that will, uh, will get you in. 
Um, don't forget to take the survey that uh, it's in the chat. Um, that will help uh, make sure that we count you as, as having attended today. Um, and uh, again, we just really appreciate your time. We know that uh, folks out in schools are extremely busy. You've got a lot of demands on your time and we appreciate that you could spend uh, an, an hour with us this afternoon. Dawn has dropped her email in the chat. So grab that if you would like to. And uh, if there aren't any more questions, I would, uh, would say we will see you all at a, uh, a future showcase. Thank you.